So it's the evening of the big Crystal Maze premiere, very exciting indeed. I mean, one thing I always found uh, a bit odd, looking back at it now a bit strange, was uh, my dad really wasn't around much after the actual filming the episode. I didn't really see much of him. I remember the evening of the actual TV episode calling up the stairs. Dad, you're going to be on the TV in a minute. You're going to get yourself down here. Me and Mum are ready to watch. No reply whatsoever. Um... He'd been in his bedroom for quite a few days, actually. It's almost like he'd entered some form of depression. I mean, he's quite a private man anyway. He very much keeps himself to himself. Uh, so I just left him up there. And I thought, all right, pal, you know, I'm going to be watching. I'm going to be cheering you on, even if you're not there next to me. The show starts. It's on the big screen in the lounge. Uh, Richard O'Brien's on screen giving the old shtick. Lovely. And then who runs on? My dad in a red jumpsuit, leading the team in. Gimmel the leader, which is great to see. Obviously, we're natural leaders. I'm evidence of that. Uh, and it was the beginning of a Crystal May show, but one extra little component, my dad was in it. I mean, how surreal is that? And I thought, right, Mark Gibson, wherever you are, sat in some council estate, watching your TV, probably a black and white with you know, one of those turning dials. I've got nothing against Mark Gibson, that's just the way he lived. You know, I did you know, ride past his house a few times on my, uh, on my BMX, and uh, he did live in a very rough area. And I thought to myself, in actual fact, I know now why you do put me in a headlock, and you do throw a lot of verbal GBH upon me, and it's because of the, um, the socio-economic situation you're suffering in. It's a demographic. You don't hate Gimmel, you just hate your, your place in society. So Richard O'Brien says at the beginning of the program, and his beautiful, gentlemanly, silk voice. So what will be the first challenge, chaps? And my dad, as the, uh, the leader of the gang, stood in his red jumpsuit, hands on both hips. He means business. And my dad gave Richard full eye contact, and he said the first challenge will be physical, and I think it will be me. And I think brave, very brave but I get to see some proper daddy action straight away in Aztec world. And he was asked to go into the first room, and it was a fantastic set, and the first thing he had to do was uh, put together a puzzle on the floor, and then when he, did, when he did that puzzle, he got to actually run up a large pyramid, like a piece of scaffolding, and at the top was where the crystal was. Da -da! Well, straight off, my dad is fantastic at puzzles. I'm terrible at them, but he's brilliant. He can do a, um, a Rubik's Cube in seconds. Well, not seconds. He'd have to be autistic to do that. And he did the puzzle in no time. And they cut to outside the actual, um, the actual challenge room. And they're looking at each other thinking, yeah, we've got the right person to go in there. Brian's doing the job. He went for the pyramid. It was surrounded by water. My dad had to jog through the water and then climb up this massive pyramid scaffolding where the crystal was at the top. My dad's not really a jogger. Uh, he doesn't really have any gym membership going on. I mean, I'm pretty surprised why he went for a physical. I, I would have thought a mental challenge would have been more him. I mean, he's a big fan of Morse and Agatha Christie. So he certainly went for it. He sprinted through the water. He came to the scaffolding and like a, a mountain cat, he leaped onto the pyramid. You know, he, he was certainly energised, psychologically at least. He was going to go for that crystal. He got about three or four, perhaps maybe six steps up the actual scaffolding on the side of the, the pyramid. And I could just hear a squeak as his trainer slipped on the steps. And he kind of did a twirl, fell on his back, and just slid down the side of the pyramid, almost like a slide on his back, like a tranchel on its back, falling down and... I just heard an enormous, well I show the whole of Britain did, just heard this enormous crack. And it kind of echoed through the whole studio. And it just squealed like a struck pig. I mean, it was like something out of an 18 certificate horror film. I mean, it was not 6.30 Channel 4 tea time viewing. It was pretty horrific. And basically, um, my dad had uh, broken his hip. And he'd hit the pyramid to such an extent the crystal had rolled off the top and was had rolled beside him and he was trying to lean over and grab the crystal but he was in so much pain I mean you know and every now and then they cut back to Richard O'Brien with the team and the, the team was saying come on Brian come on Brian grab the crystal and he was trying part of him was going to his hip every now and then he went to the crystal I didn't know which one to touch first he just kept saying I, I, I feel ill I feel ill I feel ill and at one point you cut back to him and he's wearing his jumpsuit and on the red jumpsuit you can just see a few flecks of vomit and Richard O'Brien said come on come on Brian just 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 grab the crystal and just push it to the door I'll help the team out I'm not supposed to actually open the door and and lean down and pick the crystal up but I'll do that for you but dad was not focused 
I think it was very similar to a caravan holiday we have when he had to put up an awning and he did his, his back in. Once he's hit that physical threshold, he's an, he just enters in his own dark zone. He just won't talk to anyone. And in the end, the actual uh, group just left him. It's like, right, okay, see you later, Brian. I thought, bloody hell, is that, is that it for my dad? You're just going to leave him? And every now and then, Richard would say to them, well, what about Brian? You could cash in this crystal and get Brian back, my dad. And they go, no, let's just go to um, Ocean World. We'll forget about Brian. We might get him later. I thought, flipping heck. I mean, my dad was a supervisor to some of those people. And I remember thinking, well, dad, flipping heck, a few of those need a P45 when we go back to British gas. They just kept cutting back to him in Aztec world. At that point, he was just completely white as a sheet. You would have thought at least some of the camera crew would have gone in, I don't know, giving him a rye bean or a Jaffa cake or something to keep him going. But apparently that's against the rules. He was left there. Because, you know, Crystal Maze is on TV for half an hour. When they're actually filming it, it sometimes takes two to three hours. So my dad was left there like a shot soldier on, in, the, in the middle of a war zone for hours upon hours. I, uh, the pain was so bad that it actually brought on a fever and he started tripping out and he started shouting, the pharaohs are coming, the pharaohs are coming, they're going to mummify me and drag me into the pyramid. I mean, it's just embarrassing. They finally decide, oh, how kind of them to actually pay him out, put one of their, you know, cherished crystals to Richard O'Brien to actually allow him to join in with the final activity. And all, all, as we all know, the final activity is in the air tunnel. My dad looked absolutely horrific. He looked like a reanimated corpse. It was like something out of Weekend at Bernie's. And there he was, stumbling around, just trying to, you know, find a wall to lean on as this air uh, tunnel comes to life, surrounded by this silver foil. And at one point, I remember seeing him leaning over against the wall, and his head just jerking, thinking, dear God, is he having a fit? He wasn't having a fit. Perhaps a fit would have been better. In actual fact, he was vomiting. Now, you do the maths. Vomiting in an air tunnel is not ideal, and it created uh, many problems for Channel 4. You just create some kind of vomit tornado situation, and uh, people are covered in it, people are breathing it in. Um, it wasn't good. It really wasn't good at all. And it was at that point I was beginning to think to myself, is this great PR for the Gimmel tribe? Perhaps not. I always remember right at the end of the episode, it was it was quite bizarre because it was the only episode where instead of seeing the, the group kind of embracing each other, the credits rolling down, it just went to black and the credits just fading on the screen. A bit like in Grain Chill, one of the pupils die. It was quite a remorseful ending. I think Channel 4 didn't know what to do. They paid for the show that to show it. The next day at school, I feel like a bit of a fool, it's going to be said. I don't feel Dad really represented the family that well. There's a lot of jibing that took place, you know, um, Gimmel's dad um, vomited in the crystal maze. But on a more positive note, I didn't have to give my pocket money to uh, Mark Gibson, but at the same time, I didn't get anything back in return. I should have rethought the uh, wager in a bit more detail, really. But there you go. Interesting anecdote connected to this. I mean, usually you put this on the mantelpiece, but instead it's been uh, hidden away in the loft. I mean, it's great that we got on the telly. It's great that my dad got to have a shake of the hand with Richard O'Brien. Um, it's a shame that he was in a hell of a lot of pain at the time, and he kind of used that handshake just to kind of use it as an anchor to sort of limp out the room. But um, there you go. Oh, one last thing, uh, Gimmel fans, Gimmel followers. There's been some progress on the Match.com front. I'm not going to tell you anything at the moment, okay? But some very exciting chat has been taken online. I'll just tell you one thing. I've met a very, um, very glamorous, very interesting lady from Nigeria. Leave it there. Say no more. Tune into some future romantic-themed vlogs.